But one of the things that uh, people say, even though all of those facts may be true, they say, well, I've had vaccines and I'm fine, so it doesn't really matter, right? Or, or maybe my kids had a few and they were fine when they had them, so, you know, what's the big deal? Well, there's actually some documented long-term side effects of vaccines. Some of them are immune system problems, like autoimmune diseases. Uh, some of them are, uh, are uh, uh, neurological problems, like autism, hyperactivity, ADD has been one that's suggested. Uh, dyslexia, dyslexia, that's what I just did. <laughs> uh, allergies and even some cancers actually have been associated with some of the vaccines. And so a lot of those problems that they stipulate may be caused by vaccines are way worse than any of the childhood diseases that a child might get. Now, in fact, the childhood diseases are um, greatly uh, exaggerated in order, I believe, in order to scare parents sometimes into, into vaccinating the kids. Now, your child can get almost all of the childhood diseases that we vaccinate for, get over and be perfectly fine. And they'll actually be stronger after they get over them. So in Britain, they actually, it was very common to have the measles parties. So if one kid got the measles, everybody would bring their kid over and get them all infected. That way they'd get over it and they'd never get them again because they would actually be really immune to it. Uh, they do that with chicken pox, or they used to, right? Now they want the vaccine uh, for chicken pox as well. In Chicago, there was a major outbreak, uh, like we talked about in 1993. And an expert said this, and this is a whooping cough of, of pertussis. He said the disease was very mild, no one died, no one even went to the intensive care unit. And so um, some medical doctors, and unfortunately a very a low number, but they actually only recommend tetanus vaccines because they say it's good for kids to get those type of diseases and get over them and their immune systems would be stronger. Now, actually, the funny thing about the tetanus vaccine is it's all, also a myth that you get scratched by a nail or something, you're gonna get tetanus. The way tetanus works, it's clostridium tetani, it's a bacteria, and you have to have a deep puncture wound to put that, ba that bacteria deep in there where it can't get any oxygen. And so it goes through. But that, when people were suffering from lockjaw, that was back before we had any kind of antibiotics. And so that bacteria would multiply in their, in their body during World War I or World War II or whatever, and so that was a major deal because people did get puncture wounds in, during the war. But nowadays, if your child were to get a puncture room or anything you were even concerned about, you get on antibiotics and there would be, even if you started to get those symptoms of lockjaw, you'd get on antibiotics and you'd be perfectly fine. Or garlic, we know that's 100 times stronger than any antibiotic, and you'd be perfectly fine. So a lot of times, I believe that these vaccines aren't as necessary as they're put forth to be. And also, here's what I think is, uh, really sad is that a lot of people think vaccines are their only option to prevent disease. When in fact that's not true, there, there are a lot better ways to prevent disease and chiropractic is a great way to make sure your kids don't get any diseases. Now we have probably, I'd say 25% of our, our practice is children and a lot of them haven't been vaccinated. And I guarantee you they're some of the healthiest children in all of Amarillo and they're gonna grow up to be some of the healthiest adults um, in all of Amarillo. Um, our adjustments for kids are, are not for neck and back pain, like a lot of people think. They're for the function of the nervous system. And that's why, that's why you can prevent disease with chiropractic, is because the nervous system controls one of the major, major disease-preventing systems in the entire body, your immune system. And when your immune system is working at 100%, your child is virtually, it's impossible for them to get any of those types of diseases. And so, um, so I'm gonna conclude this with giving you uh, five steps to making sure, if, if you do choose to do so, if you don't want to vaccinate kids or you talk to some of your friends and they don't want to, here's five steps so that you can be sure your kids are vaccine free and they're the healthiest kids that they can possibly be. Okay, number one, is to get a conscience affidavit form. And we have these. They look like this, you just fill them out for uh, each child. And you, all you do is mail them in. You mail them in to the Texas Department of Health. And uh, what they'll do is they'll process it and they'll send you out five of these. Five of these and 
Um, all you have to do is if any daycare or, um, by the way, I'm, I'm going through all these steps. I'm not telling you the numbers, but uh, it doesn't matter. So you fill these out, get them notarized. And by the, the day you notarize, it's good for two years. And so you give this to your daycare or your uh, college or your school. And by the way, every affiliation in the state of Texas has to take this. They have to take your child. They cannot say that we don't take those because it's by law. And, uh, and then your child gets in and they remain vaccine free. So the, that was steps one through three, by the way. Steps four and five are how you can keep your child healthy. And the first thing you do is you go to your chiropractor and you make an appointment to get their spine and nervous system checked. Your chiropractor will take it from there. <coughs> so we are taking appointments um, up at the front. And so uh, the, the second thing you do is what we talk about, we teach everybody here, and that's follow the four keys to wellness. Because when you're well, you can't be sick, no matter what. It's the truth. And, and the first key, of course, is follow the principles of health that are laid out in the Bible. The second key is to understand um, how your spine and nervous system work and get adjusted and make sure they're working well. The third key is keep your kids active and make sure they're getting enough exercise and you yourself as well. The fourth key is to eat a healthy diet and make sure you get all the nutrients that you need. Those four keys are how to stay well. All right? So I hope you learned something today. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.